Welcome to Oh My God Ministries. I am your host, Anita Morris, Reverend Anita Morris, and I am actually going to talk regarding the gospel. I wouldn't say gospel. All of it is gospel because it's oral tradition. Um, however, I'm going to come from the Old Testament called the prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk um, was a prophet who was proclaiming in the things of God in the midst of violence that was happening in the regions of Jerusalem because Babylon has caused them to be in confused place, perplexed, and and Habakkuk had a complaint to God and saying, how come these people are wealthy and advancing and the righteous go in wanting? Okay, so oftentimes he was placed at a dis-ease with God and God had a, had a word for him. Even though sometimes you don't see that your change will come, no matter the adversity, some people suffer loss going from worse condition to um, far more gruesome conditions from bad to worse but there's a word of the Lord today and again I'm proclaiming the word of God from Habakkuk Heavenly Father I thank you I thank you because you did not allow me to suffer sickness to death thank you Lord God for allowing me to have continued health and healing in my body I thank you Lord God for Allow me to be human and to allow me to have a common cold and to allow me to overcome all adversities, sickness, and illnesses. I thank you, Lord God, for touching me and touching those who are underneath my breath to hear the voice of the word of God. I pray that healing. I pray that you touch every home and free them from sickness and disease and flu, common colds, or any kind of thing. Thank you for shielding those who have lost their loved ones in recent days. Of course, my family who lost their loved ones, my cousin, and also his family, his wife, his children, and also some of those that have lost their lives in the limousine accident 20 at one time, those that who suffered in Indonesia, in Japan, and the surrounding regions, Lord God, through Tsami and all different kind of storms, Lord God. But I thank you, Lord God, that there is hope that you are sovereign, and Lord God, that there is help and that there is rescue. And we ask, Lord God, that your rescue will continue to lead them on and that you provide quiet confidence for those who are remaining. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for touching us afresh, anew, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank God. Amen. It reads in the book of Habakkuk, starting with chapter 2. I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. Oftentimes as proclaimers of the gospel, such as I am, proclaiming God's the good news of God, ministers of Christ, reverends, preachers, pastors, teachers, we are also to be in the secret place of the Most High, guarding God's word and also hiding it in our hearts, listening for the voice of God so we can have a word for those who are weary and also for ourselves to know what we need to do and how we are to be led by the Spirit of God and to be guided. Well, when I was recovering over my common cold, the Lord had me to listen and to quiet me and settle me down after burying my cousin and after I had my dad up here visiting, like I said, he's in his stage, third stage of gastric cancer. So a lot of sickness around me. So I just thank God for holding them close and holding my family close in the midst of peril. And not just my family, but you might have family that have gone through different adversities. But when you quiet yourself and when God is quieting you down to allow you to hear, listen in on what he's saying to you. And may it be a peace, even though there's different situations, society is going to move on, um, the world is going to continue to keep on moving, and there's going to be a change of command, there's going to be a change of, of what do you call it, November elections. You have all these different um, outstanding vices, virtues are going on. 
So just come and, and find a quiet place that to know that God declares the end from the beginning and he is sovereign. He sees, he's El Rohai, the God who sees everything. And so Habakkuk mentions, I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaints. Oftentimes we have many complaints. We have Me Too movement. We have um, people who have, during this month of October, it's Cancer um, Awareness Month, as well as Domestic, domestic Violence awareness month and then there's also those who were males who have been victims of domestic violence etc but we also have to give it into the hands of God and we just had uh, a news a fascinating news on CNN I'm sure you guys keep up to date with what's going on in the world and praise God for the testimony of Dr. Ford and also the uh, hearing to hear um, Honorable Judge Kavanaugh Whatever God will make, whatever is wrong, he'll make right in, it, in its due season. So I do not worry about things that I cannot change, you cannot change, but know that change will come in its due time. It reads, look at the proud. They trust in themselves and their lives are crooked, but the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. Because Habakkuk, the proclaimer, um, the Old Testament prophet, minor prophet he was, he was looking at the proud of Babylon. Look at all this is going on. They trust in themselves and they have lives that are crooked paths. They get away with everything. But he said, but the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. Amen. By what you do continuously and you're constant and you're showing yourself to trust God, that is called faithfulness to God. It says wealth is treacherous and the arrogance are never at rest. They're always feasting on other people's flesh to pray, to get an advance or to get the upper hand. But he said the just shall live by faith. Amen. That is in Habakkuk too. And then when you read along and you go further, Habakkuk was so inner turmoil and struggling with the warfare what was going on spiritually and physically um and trapped with the ruins of his his um countrymen and also the people of his city that he said wow i tremble inside when i hear this this is in Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 16 it says, I tremble inside when I hear this. My lips quivered with fear. My legs gave way beneath me. And I shook in terror. I will wait quietly for the coming day. When disaster will strike the people who invade us. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms. This is hopelessness. When you feel there's trouble, like we said, the Trasami, the Indonesia, everything feels like there's no hope. I want to throw the towel in. He said, even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crops fails, there's nothing that you can do to cause it to produce in your human self. But I come to tell you, it's not by might human power, nor by religious spirit, but by God's spirit, says the Lord. It is by his spirit. It says, even in the fields lie empty and barren. If you are at a barren place, Lodabar, which we call it in the Hebrew, where there's no growth, there's no uh, results, okay? And you are waiting for an answer. This is Habakkuk. He was crying out saying, I need an answer from you of the many complaints I have before you, God. He read, and it reads, and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty. He said, all this is going on, even though this is all going around. And the Psalms, we have hope. And it reads that thousands may fall around you, but it shall not come near your dwelling. See, we have hope in the scriptures to know, to trust in the living God, to be faithful because God is faithful to us. Not that we are faithful, 
but we continue to trust in obedience to God. Amen. It says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. After all these things, I can see that there's no hope around me, but yet I rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God of my salvation. An attitude of gratitude to take your way, your, your focus off what's going on around you. To give God the highest praise, a Shabbat praise, a hallelujah praise. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Keep looking up and I will be joyful in God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He is your strength. He makes me as a sure-footed as a deer. He makes you as a deer. So basically, he makes your feet like hind's feet, swift, moving about, strengthening you, giving you the agility, giving you the flexibility to move about, giving you the resiliency that you need to sustain, to move you from glory to glory, from strength to strength, to revive you again, to refresh you, to hadesh you. Amen. To make you new. Amen. It says, the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as a sure-footed as a deer, able to trade, able to tread upon the heights. Amen. Able to tread upon the heights. He's an abler. Amen. He's, he makes you able to tread upon your heights. Amen. That he makes the mountains to come low to bow before you. Amen. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he makes your, your mountains low and he, he lowers them to make them to valleys. Amen. And that he sets high in his high and lofty place, but he's looking after every one of us. Amen. And he's making you to tread upon your very heights. Those oppositions, those struggles, those obstacles, those adversities that surrounding you. He's making you to tread upon your highest places. And the oftentimes, it reads right here and the New Living Translation note. It reads, Habakkuk had asked God why evil people prosper while the righteous suffer. Don't be bitter that you are a follower and a believer of Christ and other people you feel that they are heathens. That's judgment. Don't cause yourself to judge others because you are a believer and somebody else is not. That would not be of God. Amen. It says, it reads in the word of God, it says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And God reigns on the just and the unjust. And he is kind to those that are unkind. So continue to keep on being kind. Amen. Keep on doing good. Amen. It said, it read that Habakkuk, the proclaimer, the prophet, the minor prophet in the Old Testament, he had asked God, why evil people prosper while the righteous, righteous suffer? Or you can see people who are truth tellers, they, they often tell the truth, but they get backlash for telling what is the truth and some people are afraid to to proclaim God's word because it's truth telling and sometimes you will be what do you call it afflicted or you would be what do you call it in a struggle in a battle it says many are the afflictions of the righteous but God will deliver you from them all don't trust in your might your human power and what is your motive in telling the truth anyway is it to glorify God to bring God glory or to bring you status and glory. Check your motives, check your heart. It says, take the log out of your own eye, then you're able to take the log and help somebody else. Amen. It says, it reads in the notes, it says, they don't, not in the long run, <clears throat> will prosper, but you would see the those that are the evil that's going on, that they're prospering in what their wicked deeds are doing for a moment. It says, Habakkuk saw his own limitations in contrast to God's unlimited power. So he was seeing with just his own lens. He didn't have a God's lens 365 going on like all around him. God's eyes go to and from the earth. 
seeing those who are worshipers and reverently serving him who fear the Lord but although Habakkuk was a prophet he didn't see all what God has seen or God has saw and it continues Habakkuk saw his own limitations in contrast to God's unlimited power and control of all the world's events so God is sovereign and that's what he made note in verse 9 19 not 9 but Habakkuk 3 19 it says the sovereign Lord and when we say sovereign Lord that means God will do what he would have himself to do he is God all by himself she is God all by himself because the paraclete is a feminine now for the spirit okay the who dwells within us the paraclete amen so you can say mother God father God but God is sovereign the divine is sovereign and he looks to make justice he looks to to make things and correct what is wrong to make right in the appropriate time he is sovereign he knows the perfect timing he knows what justice need to be taken he knows what corrective action need to be taken he is god of justice and of good judgment there's no unrighteousness in him at all god is alive and in control of the world and its events we cannot see all that God is doing, beloved, and we cannot see all that God will do, but we can be assured that he is God and will do what is right, Yashar. He will do what is right. The root word of Yeshua, complete, righteous, right. Amen. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus and he is a way out of no way amen knowing this can give us confidence and hope in a confusing world so god has not given us beloved a spirit of confusion of babylon upon us to go this way and this way who shall we do this and who shall we vote for who shall we what stance shall we take what cause shall we what efforts it should always be about showing compassion to humanity to to love as God in Christ has loved us. Amen. To forgive and walk into forgive and walk in forgiveness. To seek justice and to do good. Amen. That should be always paramount and the forefront of our minds and our lives. Amen. And that's the, the word of God for the people of God. Amen. And the the midst of suffering loss, and as we have seen on the news or those that have lost loved ones um, I'm going to read you materials that I was able and was an honor to be a part of um, clinical pastoral education in my settings of educational life clinical settings where people must say goodbye and how to say goodbye to those who are transitioning life or you might have a co-worker who's leaving to go to a different branch of of government or a different <clears throat> company or you may have lost a loved one you may have lost a limb you may have lost um, a person to death of catastrophic or sudden or crisis we don't know what your loss and transition may have been uh, a relationship we don't know what the loss is but I'm going to read this beloved verbatim it says saying goodbye Goodbyes play an important part in the circle of our lives. Like the season of the year, goodbyes help define our moments of joy and sorrow, life and death. Do we ever really get used to saying goodbye? I don't think so. But saying our goodbyes does help us experience a deeper appreciation of our humanness. The word goodbye originally meant God be with ye, go with God. It is recognition that God is a significant part of the going. There is strength in remembering that the one who brought us together will be with us as we go our separate ways. And there is the assurance that God is in our new beginning 
as well. Over the years, I have discovered that there are five important elements to saying healthy goodbyes. The order can be rearranged, but all five should be present. Number one, to acknowledge that it is a goodbye. This, it takes courage and vulnerability to acknowledge that change in a relationship is inevitable. To identify the moment of farewell has arrived shows value and respect for the relationship. Number two, to share a memory. Sharing a memory of something that happened affirms you have had a relationship. This could be a funny occasion, a story, a tender moment, a lesson learned. At the time when we were at the funeral of my beloved cousin, we shared memories at his casket. It was often hard to take in, but it was memories, stories that were told, to know that he was loved and that his imprint was upon our hearts and that we will walk in a newness of memories to come. Number three, it says, say what the relationship has meant to you. Be authentic, say what the relationship meant to you. <clears throat> this needs to be short and possibly related to the memory you just shared. What did the relationship mean to you? Number four, be specific about the future. Here it is important to be clear about what it is you want, if and how you want to say, stay in contact or cannot be avoided or contact cannot be avoided. It will shape the future. How do you want to draw it about? What does it look like to you? So make it clear. Number five, offer some type of hope or blessing. When you send off or say goodbye, offer some type of hope and blessing. Peace be with you. This involves the right of a closing conversation. A simple, I hope things go well with you. God bless you or take care. Godspeed. I love you. Grace be with you. And God watches you. And it reads continuously, before actually saying a goodbye, practice articulating a goodbye while imagining the person you are addressing. Repeat your farewell until it sounds natural. Furthermore, there are basic principles of successful termination. If you don't have a regular transition of goodbyes, there's also other successful ways of saying goodbyes in a termination way. These are the elements which help to make termination a satisfying experience. Termination is goodbyes, or goodbyes are necessarily incomplete. Okay, Express, expressing anger and or love or any other feelings that one experiences are normal and appropriate responses. These are successful elements that are comes to with your goodbye. Sometimes it becomes incomplete, incomplete. Sometimes it's anger there. Sometimes there's emotion there. It is important to name the difficult feeling. It's important that you name it, which is connected to the goodbye, which it, it evokes. Even naming that, it is hard, but it's helpful. Number three, be as specific as possible. Avoid generalities. Be as concrete as you can. It says, speak to the individual. And what was unique? What made this person unique about that person? Over against words that could divine or describe any person in that relationship, any other person in that relationship. What 
was unique about him or her. Number four, goodbyes should reflect both the good and the bad difficulties in relationships. Number five, as much as possible, goodbyes should be mutual. Both parties should be involved, should share with one another if they are living. Number six, each person needs to come to termination in his or own, her own time. Don't rush it, but allow yourself, beloved, to take the time you need on your own time to say goodbye. Some people take longer than others in terms of when they are ready to say goodbye. As you know, within grief and loss, some people take longer to move away. Sometimes they don't move along quite fast, okay? Number seven, each person needs his or her own time frame. So respect each other's timetable in which to say goodbye. We need to create enough space for people to say all that they need to say. And um, concretizing, making it concrete, you have religious traditions and rituals that give us models of termination. So you can look into those also ministers, preachers of the faith and of your holistic hope, um, help groups, peer groups help you to say goodbye. Stay connected in a healthy group when you're in transition with your loved ones and families. Stay healthy, drink a lot of fluids, take care of yourself, get a wingman, have someone to check on you, to see about you. Um, and if you don't need to be by anybody, you know, take the time to be with yourself and with God and be the watchtower what God is saying to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for your blessed assurance. We thank you, Lord God, for uh, looking lower down to us, Lord God. And you said you bless us, even we have been lower than the angels, Lord God. That who are who are we that you are mindful, Lord God, of us? And Lord God, that Lord God, you place your spirit within us to, to cause us to be children of the Most High God, the children of the Living God, to bear a righteous seed. Not that we are righteous. But you have placed your seed of righteousness within us to show forth your praise in the earth. We thank you, Lord God, for using our lips, using our ligaments, using our ears, our eyes, our senses of touch, taste, and smell. Using our voice, Lord God, to gl glorify you, Lord God, and not for malice, but for good. And thank you, Lord God, that you know the plans that you have for us, plans of peace not of our harm, to give us a future of hope and expect it in. We thank you, Lord God, for putting our, allowing us to put our trust in you. Help us to bring us to that even more closer walk with you. You said if we draw nigh to God, you'll draw nigh to us. So help us even the more. In your most holy, precious name, amen and amen. Amen.